Welcome everyone from around the world to another interview of Hemp Engineering and Green Tiger Journals. And in this particular time, we also have Dakota Moore from Babylon Farms, who is helping us to um, with this new Hemp Seed Expo. It's an idea that we came together to make it happen. Today we have we have Hannah uh, from the Czech Republic. She's um, a dear friend who I met in Nepal a long time ago. And she's also a ed chief editor of him today in the, in, in the Czech language, if I recall well as well, right? right. Yes. So um, Hannah, is our audience generally runs in between 200,000 and 300,000 uh, people that we have in our universe of followers. And I'm very mm -hmm. sure that a lot of people would like to know more about yourself. How did you end up in the hemp business? Okay, yeah, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I started uh, in 1997, uh, or 1996, I studied at the university about the uh, agriculture and like uh, organic farming and protection of the landscape and I choose the thesis on industrial hemp the time was probably the first thesis about industrial hemp in Czech Republic and since that I kind of start follow hemp I've been working for some NGO for promoting hemp and in 2010 I started my own company called Hemp Point which uh, focus on the yeah industrial hemp, mostly like distribution of the of the seeds for farmers, consulting for the farmers, and also we have online of the hemp food and hemp feed. So this is what we do now. We're trying to work also a little bit more on this like fiber de de decortication or fiber processing. So yeah, so so basically I end up because I studied that and I'm a farmer and I, I I like to support farmers to discover this new crop. Uh, being a woman, being a, a pioneer in a very difficult uh, emerging industry give you a, 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 a space that a lot of people would love to be at. And, uh, precisely because of the inf influence that you have in given to the industry, all the all the collaboration that you have done in throughout the years, and I do understand that you have also even been a part of a, a book that was published in some years ago in regards to, to to this. Tell us a little bit more about that book. About what? About the book that the, 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 the a book, book, book. Okay, yeah, it's a it's a book and a, about cannabis and sustainable development. Yes. Uh, in 2018, we did the conference with my colleague Michael Kravitz and Kenzie Zimoli at the it was the United Nations in Vienna and was focusing on the cannabis and sustainable development. And since we was like working long time, many years on the cannabis desk scheduling at the UN level on the Commission of Narcotic Drugs, PND in, in Vienna, uh, we was always trying to like bring there some like positive impact of cannabis. And since like the sustainable development goals became like more important and more discussed under like UN, uh, we, we, yeah, we just like did the cover, uh, conference how the cannabis can contribute this uh, sustainable development goals. And we did the draft paper and then the policy book. And now we have a web page, uh, cannabis SDGs, uh, uh, that uh, everybody can download this book and learn how to implement uh, cannabis. Uh, in the sustainable development goals or how cannabis or hemp can help them to achieve those goals. So, uh, you are very, you are being very humble for the impact of that book that many people consider it uh, a Bible in the industry. 
Well, uh, yeah, I, 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 I was just co author and I helped to get some funding for the book, but the main author was like Kenzi Zemole, who is the, the, like this like policy advocate and like independent researcher who is really yes. great, uh, kind of passionate uh, individual. <laughs> uh, thanks whom we like changed the cannabis uh, on the United Nations like uh, documents. So since 2020 became cannabis again, not only drug, but also medicine. Yes. And all the process through the WHO and like then like CND to really like make the review document, uh, then change it. <laughs> it was a lot of years and a lot of like hard work. Um, where, well, uh, where we didn't get much like support from the industry, surprisingly. So uh, we did it really just like a few individuals, but we did it, yeah. So with big passion, you can really change the world, even in the small yes. group, I realized after yeah. this experience. Yeah, yes. Although uh, yesterday I interviewed uh, Monica Brommer uh, mm -hmm. from Germany, uh, a very yeah. beautiful lady. And I told her that, of course, our intention is to change the world. And she said, no, I don't like this world. I think we can make a better world. <laughs> but change it, I don't think we can. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, I think like the, the, like the, the, the change on the United Nations is really, really like change for the world. Yeah, it's not just, you know, because if the, if the cannabis after, uh, uh, almost like 60 years wasn't recognized as a medicine and now is it which means like the the scientists can do the clinical studies much freely and like we can really point it out that has some medical value which wasn't was very hard which wasn't very easy before it was quite hard so i think this is important you know and 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 it can has really like Im impact on the like the, the world the change especially on the medicine but of course it's it's just the beginning i think like there was nothing really rescheduled ever <laughs> on the <laughs> united nations so it kind of like did a miracle anyways and uh and now we would like to focus more on other errors which are also like prohibited and not really you know for for reasons so it was just kind of like build up the the road to 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 find the way how the process can really happen to kind of decriminalize or reschedule the drugs. We prove it on cannabis and now we can do it on, I don't know, coca leaves, mushrooms, all the other herbs or plants which are prohibited for no really reason, you know. But you are, you are, you're right, um, Hannah, because um, when I started in 2018, when I joined the hemp business, there were only 26 countries that hemp was legalized. Now we're talking, if I recall well, 46 that I have counted. So um, it just basically doubled in less than four years, so, which is fantastic for the industry as a whole. So Hannah, what else are you doing uh, for the business? I, you are going to be one of the featured speakers for the Hem Seeds Expo. We're gonna be talking about genetics. We're gonna be talking about cloning, and I know that you are you are a pioneer in this area. <laughs> yeah, well, like my company distributes the hemp seeds from all the European breeders, so the, the farmers who are interested to do like trials of the different varieties, they can buy with us small packages. So this is how we, how we try to support the industry and all has a labels and all it's like track, trackable. So we're trying to like do this kind of like high quality seed distribution uh, in collaboration with the breeders. So we are, we are able to also provide the, the information from the breeders, how to grow, like what's the description of the varieties. And since the US industry started to boom and from the CBD, they are like moving or paying more attention to the like fiber industry and grain uh, potential. 
uh, we established the company in US with our partners in US. Oh, that's good. So that's perspective good. and and Bert James and with my boyfriend who is from US, but he lives with me in, in Czech Republic, uh, Robin Wested. And we founded the company. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and we, we found this company called Conopy US, which uh, going to focus on the distribution of the seeds from Europe in US, because since the transport uh, cost rises so, so bad because of the COVID, uh, it's like everything is five times more expensive. Yes. So for the farmers, it's not really like in price, price intested <laughs> to buy seeds directly from the market. So we wanna we wanna bring the containers of the seeds, decrease the cost of transport, decrease of the like required paperwork because now we handle one paperwork for all the container, oh, and okay. then the farmers can buy. From it. Yeah, and then our the farmers in US or all in North America, in South America can buy the seeds from us in US from our house in Tennessee and North Carolina mm -hmm. and we able to give them the seeds for good price and the good quality the seeds directly from the breeder and I think it's very important because in, in the US like many people focusing on this like pro, pro processing but they don't really know what they are going to grow even they building processing already so I think it's very important to have like good source of the stable genetics, so you can have some real data for your economic and you know and farmers also not struggling. Okay, I'm going to do sowing of some seeds I get, but like who knows what what I getting, you know? So it's like with these European varieties, it's always clear what you're getting. And we also subscribe the varieties to many trials in US with the universities. Last year was like 12 universities trialing our varieties. So now we able to give the farmers the data about like how these varieties grows where. So, and we also giving them consulting to like my experience from Europe, you know, or like the our colleague Bert James, he's consulting more than 20 years in US, in North Carolina. So we combining this like European <laughs> experience with like US experience of, for farmers and trying to really help the farmers succeed and not fail and not like waste more money, what they already wasted many times in CBD and them to be successful. And my experience from Europe, it's good genetics that is my much higher chance <laughs> you yes. can succeed and also you need to succeed which are scalable so this is why we work with this like biggest breeder in europe and bringing the genetics uh, from them directly so the farmers they don't need to worry about like all the paperwork and they just buy from us and, and the, quality, the important is and the that they, the well, they you know, check know. in time yeah 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 the quality is important but also uh, like we building the relationship you know so we will not just sell the seeds to the farmer and never be interested to hear from him we trying to sell him the seed but then really continue to look after him to make sure he has like proper machine for hours maybe even like help him find some buyers. But this really depends on the location where he's growing, you know, so we can hardly promise everybody we figure it out, like how, how you will like sell your production, but we can help you to grow your production as best as you can. So you have better product on the markets to be sold, you know, because of course, as every industry, also in hemp industry, you need to produce not only like material, but like good quality material to be able to ask for good price. So we're trying to understand, let understand the farmers how to make the good quality material that they can succeed on the market. Right. Anna, it's great pleasure with seeing you again. I'm not, I'm not kidding, you know. 
I still have the taste of your butter that you gave me in, where was the last time I saw you? I thought, I think we were in Uruguay or in the United States, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Hannah, I have a, a question for you. So I have a question <laughs> for you. If you want to send a message to the decision makers, what would you tell them in this historical uh, I, moment? Uh, I think, I will tell them that they really should be supportive for the for the hemp farmers and like try to collaborate with them to find the best condition, you know, and best regulation to support them. Because uh, there is big lack of like standards and, and, and regulations and in this like weak environment of like missing regulation and standard, it's hard to develop the industry. And of course, like the, the re regulators are not the only ones who should work on the like better conditions for the farmers, but I will just tell them be interested in the hemp industry because this is the future and help us figure out like the best regulations and standards for for not only farmers, but for all like the value chain to exactly. support it and, and let it grow. Well, may Hannah, once again, it has been a great pleasure talking to you. I think uh, uh, what you have given and what you're and what you're doing and the time to come, history will write beautiful things about you. Uh, um, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Looking uh, forward to your show.